Speed Scene Live, the number one online drag racing TV show and the only show dedicated to the sportsman racer. Brought to you by Curry Rear Ends, m and Tires, Hedman Hustler Headers, Aeromotive Fuel Systems, and TheFoat.com. With your hosts, Diana Might, Bruce Barker, Scott Lucky Hudson, Alex the Car Girl Rogio, Hot Rod Bob Beck, plus Dar Hawthorne and Donnie Couch. Oh yeah, and it's another Tuesday night. You're live with Diana Mike. Welcome to Speed Team Live, everybody. We've got Scott Lucky Hudson here to my left. I'm ready, Dynamite. Let's go. <laughs> and, of course, we've got our car show enthusiast, Bob. Hi, everybody. <laughs> and back there handling all the controls with his little crippled arm, we've got... <laughs> I have to tease him. We've got Bruce. Look how cute he looks. Everybody, send him Aww. send him love. Aww. He needs to heal up. Hey, yes. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm at the corner, though. We have a handicapped person. Hey, we you're right. Do. Yeah. You're right. We, it's sort of like our own affirmative yeah. so action we've show. We've got the really. female, yeah. right? Yeah. We've got the long haired. Yeah. We got the old guy. <laughs> and we got the crippled. Oh, there we go. We got, <laughs> wow. we got almost everything. Is that here. politically incorrect or what? I Did I just that. trump it? You just yeah, yeah, you <laughs> totally <laughs> trumped Trump. Oh, I trumped oh, it. <laughs> man, unbelievable. Hey, tonight. Oh, got to get this thing back oh, on track. This is great video, Bruce. Man, you found some cool stuff. Oh, this is the video that Bobby sent us. Really? Oh, Bobby, you rock, dude. Hey, tonight we're going to find out about the Red List Group. It is racing, yes. Also, Geezer Gassers with Chuck Lipka, who's going to be calling in. we got some great footage for you to take a look at, in addition to the great stuff that we're looking at right now. You know, Bob, yes. some people I have heard, they call you the king of card trivia, or should I say the, the king, <laughs> oh, the nice. king look, of look, card look, trivia. Look, uh, stuff. What's coming up tonight? Hey, we're going to talk about the king of rock and roll. Oh, there's the tie-in. And he was a car enthusiast. We're going to show you some of the cars he owned and some that were kind of famous. Well, I was talking about the king. <laughs> yep. Yes. Wow. Yeah, rock and roll. Man, yeah. that sounds great. And, of course, there's got to be a pink Cadillac in there somewhere. You bet there is. Dynamite, yeah. I know you're a fan. you got a yeah. 57. You know Coupe what? Deville. Mm, Coupe Deville. But it's white. It's not pink. But, you know, what? I, I can appreciate any color Cadillac. Is that the Eva factory color yours? Was it always white? Uh, no, actually, it was kind of in pieces. It was one of those cars <laughs> my dad put together. So parts of it were actually pink, parts uh -huh. of it were green, and parts of it were white. Is it yeah. kind of like a Johnny Cash? Yeah. yeah. You know, one piece at a time. One piece at a time. That was my daddy. Yeah, that's right. that's, and for all you know, there's a part on there that was from one of Elvis's cars. You never know. There I'm you gonna, go. Thank you. I'm just going to say there could yeah. possibly be a part of Elvis's yes car on mine. Well, I, I've Elvis seen the way that trunk. caddy looks. There could be Elvis in there. <laughs> yeah. you know, that trunk hasn't been open in a long Stop time. Stop it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> What's keeping the soul? mice away? That's what <laughs> I want. Yeah. Hey, I'm getting ready to hit the road. I'm going to be heading on east. I'm heading out to the New Hampshire Hot Rod Reunion. Ooh. I'm going to head on down, drop down to Maryland. I'm going to be part of the Yellow Bullet Nationals, man. I'm Ooh. looking forward to being there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to hit the Good Guys Race at Beach Bend. I'm going to hit some car shows, Shades of the Past. I'm going to be all over. So if you see me at an event near you, stop on by, say hi. And uh, I want to find out who these fine-looking yeah, gentlemen trio? are. Trio? Are they going to start singing for us? Yes. Well, <laughs> this, yeah, the Jersey Boys. <laughs> hey. No, they're a little further north. Okay, uh, okay. got yeah. it. Yes, yeah. this is a uh, New Hampshire area. I think uh, actually mm. Bobby's out in New York or, or Connecticut. Connecticut, I think. Connecticut, yeah, because yeah. yeah, I know every winter he puts the dragsters away. From for the oh, winter. that's yeah. right, he does. Yeah, they get put to bed at a certain mm -hmm. time. Anyway, on the uh, left of your screen, uh, looking at us, uh, that would be Bobby. Uh, there's also Rich, his buddy Rich, and Jack Reed. You know the famous uh, Jack approved. You've got a oh, yeah, J A approved. Oh, is that Jack? I know. Yeah, oh, that's mm -hmm. Jack. So you okay. know, people say you don't know Jack. Now you, know you do. You know this. Hey, this I'm, show uh, is actually Jack approved. He's yeah. told me that personally. Well, that's yeah. right. See, I didn't realize this. We're going to do a little zoom in here. Okay. Look, look what's on the shirt. Yeah, look, yes. yeah. Yes. Yes. Isn't that cool? Wow. They're good guys. Good guys. Showing a yeah. speed scene live, a little love right there. Mm -hmm. So we're looking forward to seeing the hells of pop and dragster. Hey, Bruce. Yeah, yeah, look at there. It. These are both. These Bobby's are actual, first. correct 
mm-hmm. not recreations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. These are actual like 1959, mm-hmm. 1960. Yeah. The These are the hells of pop and drag, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I think uh, the one on the left is a drag master chassis. Mm-hmm. Huh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure about the other one, but these are. Well, it depends on which left you're talking about. Uh, well, whatever the, left is the, left. By the open door is the drag master. There you go. Uh, okay. And, oh, okay, uh, and that is the Hell's a Poppin' car, uh, yeah. according to the l- logos on it. The other one is uh, somebody's bar and grill is the advertising on that one. <laughs> you could actually cook things on the motor, so either yeah. way it works. <laughs> well, this is a, uh, these, these are great dragsters. I look forward to seeing at least one of them at the Hot Rod Reunion up in New Hampshire, the NHRA Hot Rod Reunion. And uh, these are cool, old style. You know, this well, that's, is, that's just in a couple of weeks, isn't that lucky? That's right. It's coming wow. right up. Mm. Wow. So everybody better get their cars ready. For those of you up there in uh, Canada, get ready. Come on down. For those of you in Florida, come on up. It's going to be a blast. Oh, oh, there's, a, there's the oh, speed scene. Right there. Right there. <laughs> it's everywhere. Now, didn't I put a speed scene sticker on that car, you Lucky? You did, Diana. I, in fact, I, I should have sent somewhere. that photo. I got a photo of you bending over, putting oh, the sticker on. Yeah, you just wanted mm. the photo of me bending over. For my eyes mm, only. That's I'm, right. Yeah, yeah, I think there known. were a few more people than just your eyes watching. I, <laughs> I knew there was an ulterior motive to the entire sticker campaign. And now I, I know, Bob. No, it was a posterior yes. moment. <laughs> yes. I like the way the halter top was kind of blowing is, in Is that breeze. what Yeah, there was yes. a little bit of breeze. That's, uh, <laughs> that's what I liked. And, uh, oh. So uh, we're, now they moved the NHRA Hot Rod Reunion up a couple weeks, mm-hmm. put you more in the summer, less in the fall. Okay. So uh, that'll be a cool deal. And uh, looking forward to being out there. Now, uh, tonight we're going to talk about some uh, gassers. We're going to talk about the Red List group. But, you know, we were out at the Bowling Green Beach Bend uh, Hot Rod Reunion. And we ran into a gentleman by the name of Gary uh, Mosey, I think his name is. Mm -hmm. And he put a Speed Scene Life sticker on his car. And he said, Mm. man, uh, you know, I'd always wanted to ask you guys for one. And check this out. Is that beautiful? That's a gorgeous car. car. Now, if I ever did a 32, this is what I would like because Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. it's just, to me, it's got everything just right. It's nostalgic. It's classic. It reminds me of, remember that yellow one on American Graffiti? That's right. That's when I fell in love with the 32s. It was just like, I just, oh. And he's running quarter one. miles. Look at the dial in, 1066. Wow, yeah. good for him. Yeah, he's cranking. Notice the front tires are a little bit off the ground. Yeah, mm-hmm. a little bit mm-hmm. off the ground. Hey, yeah. Bob, clue yeah. us into, maybe this applies only to open cars, but what mm-hmm. a high boy roadster. High boy. This isn't a roadster. No, this is a roadster. It's a high boy coupe. It's mounted on top of the frame. Okay. You can see the frame rails. So a that is the boy, definition. Right. Look, a low boy, you would channel. hide the, you channel channel the body mm-hmm. over the frame rails. Right. I got mm-hmm. you. Okay, now, so now, this is a high boy. But why? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I understand, and I know the look, but I don't understand why, because it seems like everybody's always trying to lower their car, lower their car, and all of a sudden you get people that are trying to raise the car. Why no, did they try no, to raise the car? No, it wasn't raising the car. It was just leaving the body in the stock mounting position on top of the frame. Okay, so The, the car yeah. height isn't raised, or isn't altered. It's the body. It's just the way it was made. Yeah, yeah. in other words, on a 32 Ford, it was mounted on top of the frame, yeah. on, and Model A's, and so forth. Sure. Oh, so this is how it came from the factory. Right, so when you right. took the running boards and the fenders off, right. it would look like this anyway. Yeah, as a matter of fact, on 32 okay. Ford, there was, a, there was a crease in the frame that made it up to the fenders, so they didn't have a filler on the side or a, or a panel oh. like the Model E's did. Huh. So it saved Ford some money. Oh, well, yeah. I'm all for saving less cheap, money. A little less cheap metal. Yeah. Hey, Bob, before we yeah. go to our first caller, i got to ask you. Yeah. I noticed you're giving away some uh, uh, some kind of a free oh, deal at yeah. Irwindale. We definitely are. If you go onto my Facebook page or, you, or Speed Scene Live's Facebook page, you're going to find a free pass to Irwindale Drag Strip Thursday night racing the next two weeks. So you can either come this Thursday night or the following Thursday night. If you download the ticket, it's free entry as a spectator. That's a cool deal. So you it get is. to go out, have a good time, hang with the race cars. Yeah. And, uh, and, and of course, you don't need a pit pass because you no. can just walk around and hang out you in the pits. Pits are open. And, and this weekend at Irwindale, this week, it's a busy week for drag racing. We're going to race Thursday night, Saturday night, and then Sunday is the Summit Series points race. Wow. So gates open at 4 p.m. on Thursday and Saturday for night racing. And then Sunday, gates will open about 7 or 8 o'clock. We'll start racing around 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. Huh. Man, that's a pretty sweet deal. Yeah, it's going to be some fun racing, some great racing. Some of the, the top NHRA bracket racers in the Southern California area will be out there this Sunday. Come on out and see them. And if you just want to have fun, Thursday and Saturday is the time to come out. 
10 bucks as a spectator and let you download the pass. 20 bucks to race your car. So come on out. You know, I call Saturday night date night. You know, bring the wife, bring the girlfriend, bring both. I don't care. But come on out Saturday night to her window. Nice, nice. You call Saturday night's date night, Bob? Sure, guys you can do, you know, huh? take, the, take their girls out mm. and you know, yeah. go to the drags. I mean, okay. You could get one of those uh, King Tacos. <clears throat> yeah, well, no, King yeah. Tacos aren't there anymore, but there are tacos. <laughs> okay. All that barbecue is yep. there. Nice. And then, okay. you know, the typical mm-hmm. track uh, tube steaks. And tube steaks tube for steaks. date night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what I call a date night. Mm. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm thinking oh, about a CZ Top song right now. <laughs> wow, oh, yeah, yeah. Dude, we are so oh, back into the goodness. politically incorrect you know, realm. Think about ZZ Top, you know? uh, Jimmy Shine, mm-hmm. and uh, the ZZ Top guys came out to the track just a few weeks ago. Hmm. So they were what doing is, what does Jimmy life. Jimmy Shine and Tube Steaks have to do with anything? Well, she's, uh, you're talking about ZZ Top. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And ZZ Top was there. Oh, and by the way, ZZ there. Top's cool. going to be at the L.A. County Fair, I know, in a couple of weeks when it opens. Oh, too, wow. So, yeah. I'm going to have to go out there, you know, because uh, there's, there's a hot rod cruise night. At the L.A. County Fair in Pomona? At the L.A. Every night there's Mm -hmm. a cruise through the fairgrounds with hot rods. Wow, that sounds like fun. So if you're going to the L.A. County Fair, you'll get to see that as well in the evening. Well, Diana, I know you got our first caller. Is that Jesse on the line? That is Jesse on line one, and I would like to bring him on. Jesse, welcome to Speed Scene Live. Hey, how are y'all doing? Thank you for having me on the show tonight. Absolutely. Jesse, it's great to have you. Thanks for calling. you got a big event coming up this weekend. Yeah, yeah. So the event coming up this weekend is uh, the Red List Series. Um, and what it is is a, a new drag racing series that I started myself um, earlier this year. And basically what we're doing is we're kind of bringing just a new touch to drag racing. So, you know, instead of the normal, typical, you know, bracket racing and, you know, things like that, what we're doing is a heads-up style type racing where racers are coming in and they're actually getting points every single run they make. So based on their um, their uh, ET. Their 60 foot, their reaction time, and if they beat the person next to them that they won't end up against, um, they get points for each one. And the guy with the most amount of points at the end of the day wins the overall points battle and uh, the thousand dollar grand prize. Well, that's mm. nice. So you don't have to be the fastest car. You could get points other ways. Exactly, exactly. So that was the thing. I wanted to make it to where, you know, we can have high horsepower cars come in, we can have low horsepower cars, we can have, you know, mid mid power cars come in and all of them be able to compete on a somewhat level playing field. Yes, the guys who are running the faster times are getting more points, but typically what we what we see in drag racing is guys who have a lot of power can't make, you know, 15, 20 passes in a day just because, you know, their car will overheat or mm-hmm. break or whatever. But the guys with the lower horsepower cars, they can actually make a lot more runs. So even though they're not scoring as many points per run, they can still uh, have a somewhat of an even battle because they're making more passes than the faster guys. Nice, nice. And this is kind of uh, spectator friendly because people get to see heads up racing and they get to see, you know, friends race each other in a grudge race style. It makes it more fun for the spectators, don't you think? Exactly. So that's the cool thing about it. If people are going to come out and you're going to see all their favorite street cars, and we have a huge array of uh, cars coming out. I mean, it's uh, you know, it's just it's great because it's not it's not you know just the muscle cars only. And we have exotics coming out. Uh, we have you know classic cars. We have modern you know muscle. We have imports. We have everything you know across the whole spectrum. So it makes it really cool. All the guys coming out to watch. You know, all these cars are cars they've seen on YouTube. You know, it's been all over Facebook, and, you know, they're just really, really cool cars, street cars that they can actually relate to, you know, and cars that they follow online all the time. And they get to see these guys go out there and race, you know. So it's a pretty cool event, very family-friendly. You know, people can bring, you know, anybody out to watch, um, you know, and and it's not, you know, super expensive to watch either. You know, just come out, you know, and uh, you watch and have a good time that night. So basically a novice racer could come out and participate in something like this, right? It could be your first time ever drag racing. You can come out as long as you have your safety equipment, your Mm -hmm. helmet, Mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you should be good to go. Yeah, so we're going to have people... That would be great. You should promote it that way because there's a lot of, you know, I I talk to a lot of people and they're like, oh, I I would love to do that. Where could I do that? How could I do that? What car could I do that in? Yeah, but Diana might, in addition to being friendly towards the novice racer Uh or the first time racer, Uh 
He's also got some big hitters. He's got a 2000 and 2012 Chevy Camaro that has 1,200 horsepower to the Ooh, rear wheels. That's huge. He's got a Ford GT with 850 horsepower. Mm-hmm. He's got big hitters showing up. And and I, I can respect that, Lucky. All I'm saying is, like he said, there's a multitude of different levels of racers that are going to be out there. So this is going to be a good experience for those people who are thinking about getting into the, the racing world, don't you? think exactly exactly yeah so yeah there are the heavy hitters there are the big horsepower cars there's a few cars on there that didn't list their horsepower that you know are coming with possibly more horsepower than that 1200 horsepower uh, uh camaro so yeah there's a lot of you know big time guys like that kind but then again you know you can be somebody who's brand new to it and come out and just you know see what you got you know mm-hmm. it's uh you know no big deal it's not like you know you only have a certain amount of runs to to um, you know, get your passes in. It's a, it's basically open track the whole night. So yeah. as many times as you want to line up is as many times as you're going to run. So yeah. that's the cool thing about the event. It's almost like an endurance event. You know, get <laughs> get in line, get in line, get in line, and keep, keep going and going keep and going. going. Four point. Well, you picked the perfect track, Jesse, because we love that Bakersfield track. The Auto Club Dragway Famoso is a fantastic facility. Uh, the track is great, so you're not going to have any issues with people complaining about, oh, the track's no good, or I can't oh, hook up, or the boo-hoo. pits are crappy. <laughs> no, no, it's all good up there. I can yep. give you a story. Our tow truck driver from AAA got out of the truck at the last race mm-hmm. to get somebody who stuck, got stuck on track, and as he walked away from his truck, his shoe soul <laughs> stayed on the track. Wow! Yeah. wow. Yeah. That place was sticky. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's a great facility. <laughs> Jesse, you, you also have motorcycles on this event, too, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're going to have bikes, too. Um, the first event, you know, I didn't really put out for, you know, bikes to come, but we still have, like, two random guys uh, show up with their bikes. They just wanted to run their bikes. So I was like, yeah, just come and run it. But that kind of gave me the idea. I was like, why not have bikes here, too? So we're actually yeah. going to have a few bikes, you know. So it's not a lot, this event, but we'll have a few. And I hopefully, you know, in the coming events, we have more and more bikes, and we can actually open up the bike competition to its own separate competition in the event. Because right now we can't really – have the bikes compete against the cars because it really, really wouldn't be fair. No, no, no. Because <laughs> you know, the bike can just uh, go, know, and go, and go, and go, and go, and go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They'll, they'll make, you know, 30 passes and win the event. <laughs> yeah. now, now, Jesse, how did you come up with this idea, this concept of uh, the Red List? You know, how and why? Um, so I came up with it actually because I'm, I'm active duty Navy. So I'm at, um, oh. while I was on deployment last year um, on my ship, I was on the USS Comstock. We were out there in the Arabian Gulf. Uh, for about five months and uh, while i was out there you know i had you know a lot of time to think about you know things and how i wanted to do this year and all that because you know i'm also racing too in um uh um, the nascar uh will and all america series and also the nascar canon pro series but um you know on the side i was like i want to you know host my own events so i'm always trying to figure out okay what's the best thing should, should i do you know should i uh host uh you know drag racing events should i host road course events you know how should i do this and uh, drag racing is where I began, you know, all my racing and everything. So I really loved it, and I've, I've helped host another event before. So I figured, hey, you know, this is a good thing to do. Let me, let me do it. So I started thinking, okay, you know, how should I do this? Should it be a bracket, you know, racing type deal? And I hate bracket racing. So I was like, no, we're not going to do that. I'm going to develop a brand new system that's never been seen before. And I'm going to – what inspired me, for some reason I was thinking about – uh, the uh, the uh, BCS, the Bowl Championships uh, Series uh, point system uh, that they used to use for college football. And that is what kind of inspired me to do a point system for uh, drag racing. And I uh, just figured out the plan that would work. It took many, many trials and errors to figure out the best way to make it work so it would be fair for everybody. But, uh, you know, I made it work. And, um, yeah, after that, you know, came home from deployment um, at the end of December and then started, you know, putting things together and held the first event in uh march march uh, march 1st of this year jesse you've been you say you've been driving down at irwindale have you been driving the late models yeah 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 okay, so um i, I started that. late well yeah i started late model racing uh earlier this year um in um april april was my first event mm-hmm. and i've uh i've had eight starts this year and then i just recently um moved up to the uh, nascar k and n pro series so wow um, my first my first start for that was um last weekend actually in uh, evergreen speedway but unfortunately you know had a uh, wreck in uh, the first practice for the wet track and it got a little loose going into turn one oh. and uh you know the rear end hit the wall and you know that ended my day right there we couldn't get it fixed 
for the race. So we didn't really make that race. But um, our next one coming up that I'll be running in is the uh, Idaho 208 and uh, Meridian Speedway up in uh, uh, Meridian, Idaho. Nice, nice. Well, I went ahead and put a link to your Facebook page on our Facebook. We put it on the thefote.com. Uh, I'm going to put it everywhere so people know about the event. And uh, is that the best place for people to go to get more information? Yeah, yeah, the best place really, yeah, just go into our uh, Facebook page. So I uh, just, go, I'm not Google searching, but uh, Facebook searching uh, the Red List Group. So if they just look up the Red List Group, they'll find it on there. And also they can go on Instagram, too, look up the same name. They can see it. And on there is where you can click on the uh, Tickets Available tab on the uh, on the uh, page or the Sign Up tab on the page. And um, they should be able to get registered, buy some tickets online, or they can buy tickets at the gate, either way. But, uh, yeah, everyone should come out this weekend to the event. Nice, nice. Well, Jesse, thank you for calling in. Sounds like a great deal. And, uh, hey, thanks for your service in the Armed Forces. We're huge supporters of the Armed Forces, and we want to thank you for uh, helping our country out. Definitely, definitely. Thank you so much for having me tonight. And I just want to thank some of the sponsors and supporters who will be supporting this event. Mm -hmm. um, Bay Area Racing, they're going to be coming out. Uh, Hot Rod Magazine should be making an appearance. Uh, Why This Ride, uh, Wax for Dads, and uh, also uh, Caltoon LSX. They'll be giving away some uh, free dinos uh, for some of the different categories for the event. So wow. you know, I want to thank them for supporting the event uh, this uh, this year. Nice. Great. Well, thanks a lot for calling, Jesse. It's an honor to have you on the show. Good luck. That's this weekend, Bakersfield. Go on up and be part of this great event. Thanks, Jesse. All right. Thank you so much. I'll have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Right. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to go talk to Hot Rod Bob, and we're going to get some of his great American auto scene. of racing tires that give you the best bite for the buck. You paid a lot for that horsepower. Make sure you use it all. m &H Tires has the best compounds available for maximum traction. Go to mandhtires.com. That's m-a-n-d-h-tires.com. Buy direct and save at the website and mention the speed scene for a 5% discount. That's right, m tires.com. Call them at 661 Three two four four seven seven three. M and H Tires has tech guys ready to answer your questions or to recommend the best tire for you. Slicks or DOT. M and H Tires has it all. M and H were the first to create racing tires for muscle cars and also the first to create racing tires for sport compact cars. Legendary M and H Tires. Shop online. Mention the speed scene and save five percent. Get the best racing tires, great personal service, and save 5%. Go to mandhtires.com or call them at 661-324-4773. mandhtires.com. Welcome back to Speed Scene Live, the number one online drag racing TV show. Brought to you by Curry Rear Ends, m &H Tires, Hedman Hustler Headers, Aeromotive Fuel Systems, and TheFault.com. Yes. Welcome back. Look at this. Well, not this, because, you know, it's like, why yeah. would you do that? I'm Bruce Barker. <laughs> but also here tonight is Diana White. 
See, now you should be looking at that. Here's Lucky Hudson. Yeah. There's Hot Rod Bob Beck. Uh -oh. and, uh, <laughs> look at look at the color on that camera. I'm so jealous now. How come you got the good camera, Bob? I don't know. Well, How'd you that know, happen? we've given him the crappy one for so many years. It's time we give him a good one. <laughs> yeah, it's actually just the reflections of the shirt. The, the camera yeah. That's wild. what it is. Maybe that is. By the way, that yes. shirt is looking good. What's it the is. source of that shirt? What that do you? It is a shirt that they do every year. Spider Raisin does it for the California Hot Rod Reunion. It is the gas. Is the geezer? What are they calling? The Gathering of Geezers. Oh, okay. And they do well, this every year. Well, you should just wear that all the time. Uh, you know, I do. You know, I've got, <laughs> I've got two or three. I just wear them around the house and stuff. Uh, but, yeah, we get these. Uh, you've got a special order of them. I think the orders are already closed for the year. But uh, Spider Raisin makes them every year for the California Hot Rod Reunion. Well, and you know, if you're like me, you'll just uh, wear the same one around the house. Don't get two yes. or three, man. Just keep no. wearing the He's same one. He's got that embroidered yeah. on his pajamas. Yes, I do. You know, uh, on his, his, uh, yeah. oh, that, his robe. Yeah, it says right in the front. Yeah. <laughs> I, we, we do that every once in a while. When I used to work for good guys, I used to bring home a shirt for my kid every after every show. Yeah. The backs on the good guy's shirts were always the same. It was only the fronts that were different. Oh. So he would, you know, he thought he was cool. He was wearing a good guy's shirt. He'd wear it at the school every day, a different one. Yeah. Someone asked him why he wears the same shirt oh, every day. Yeah, Getting to realize the fronts were different. He yeah. never wore a good guy's shirt again. <laughs> you know, uh, unfortunately, since most of the... the uh, People buying the shirts yes. are geezers. That's true. Uh, no pre-sale ordering allowed. <laughs> oh. Oh, no. oh, is that like don't buy green bananas, Lucky? <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, with a lot of us buy them, we forget to pick them up. Oh, God. <laughs> well, I... Yeah. Do you work here, you? Oh. I, I'll even buy two bananas, and then the second one just sits around, and it, you know, it just, yeah. it's like, oh, I forgot to eat that banana, and now it's oh. Well, speaking of bananas, Bob. Bob, yes. <laughs> All right. Hey, welcome, everybody, to Speed Scene Live. I'm Hot Rod Bob, and you've got gas again on a Tuesday night. You know, the king of rock and roll, the great Elvis Presley, was also a car guy. Mm -hmm. And he had a bunch of different types of cars. We all know about the pink Cadillac. He bought that for his mother, and that was something that always stayed uh, in the forefront. And there is the actual Cadillac he bought for mom. Wow. That's Little, a beauty. Where yeah, is that yeah. now? I, it's in a museum, and I believe uh, it, it his own at the Graceland. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Or some yeah. You know, I yeah. saw where, where some of these cars were. Some of them aren't there, uh, you know, but they're all preserved. And pretty much every car that he ever owned is still around. I wonder wow. if that's where that pink Cadillac song came from. Mm -hmm. You know, it might have been. Yeah, might have been. Was... But he bought that for his mom. That was his, his first gift to his mom after he hit it big. Huh. Boy, that's a fine-looking car. Oh, what after happened? After he this did what? Bit. After he hit it big. After yeah, he became after he hit this oh, car big. Okay. He yeah. hit this car with a Cadillac, and it that's what happened. It looks like it, yeah. Now, this, this <laughs> after is a, he hit her with a pig. <laughs> he hit her with a pig because <laughs> it's a pink Cadillac. That's what it sounded like. Yeah. <laughs> and it's Miss Piggy's coming. No. Uh, on all seriousness aside, this was, it's a bad <laughs> shot, but this car is covered in dust. This is a very rare BMW sports car. And that was his. Now, we'll see a better shot of it a little bit later on. Oh, There it okay. is. But, and that's in a garage. And mm. you can see it's just collecting dust over the years. But that car is in that condition is probably only worth about a million. And, and Elvis actually drove that car around. He drove that car around. And it, it was a really high-dollar car. BMW was just starting to resurrect itself after World War II. Mm. They started out with the little Isetta. That's the car that kind of saved them in yeah. the 600. Little bubble but car then they thing, started yeah. making big sedans and this sports car. That was just amazing. It's so funny. There's a tag on this one. Uh, you can't really read it just by yeah. the left tail light there. This is Foreign Car Center. It's funny. We used yeah. to refer to these cars it's as foreign. foreign cars. It's foreign. That car is weird. Yeah, it's not from America. Yeah, it's not an import. It's a foreign car. It's, it's a foreign car. Yeah, there's this picture of him in the car, and that's when he was still in the military. So oh, he probably wow. bought this car while he was in Germany because that's where he was assigned when he was in the Army. Wow. Who knows what he might have been saying right here. Even here, it looks like he was singing. Yeah. Hey, get out of my way. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I think he's saying, hey, where's the rest of the car? Yeah. yeah. This thing's so small. Yeah, yeah, it's not at all like the pink Cadillac I bought my no. mom. Now, this is one of his last cars. This was a Stutz. Now, a Stutz what? Yes, it was. Yeah. And uh, did they... Did they call it a Bearcat at this point? I don't remember if they called Stutz? it a Bearcat or not, but they called it a Stutz, and it was it was made on a, a, an American car at the time. I don't remember what the base of the car was. It looks very But GM. all new bodywork, leather interior. He had one. Evil Knievel had one, mm -hmm. and they were just they're really high dollar cars at this point. But they were one of the 
first neoclassics. It's got the pipes coming out of the side yeah. like the Excaliburs yeah. did, yeah. remember? Right, and, and, the the old, and the original yeah. Stutz did, too. Okay. And it looks like an old, like a Buick or something. Yeah, it could have been. It was probably yeah. based on a GM body of that yeah. era. Yeah, looks about that. Uh-huh. Oh, okay, another oh. shot. There's another yeah. shot from the rear. You know, this is the phony spare tire on the trunk. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they were really luxurious, full leather interiors when domestic cars really didn't have it. Yeah. Oh, this is a nice That's one. Nice. Beautiful wow. Caddy yeah. convertible. And it says Elvis Presley Automotive Museum. And I got a feeling they have most of his cars in that museum. Mm-hmm. I believe it is back near Graceland. Isn't it? I think it's right across the street from Graceland, actually. Could be. We, uh, we went to Graceland a few years ago. And where they have you wait for the tours to go across the street, yeah. there's a big building with a bunch of cars Could've in it. That. Yeah. That was his convertible. Now, mm-hmm. Mercedes, he liked his sports cars. Mm-hmm. He liked German cars. He had a few German cars of a different type. It's a little 280 SL. They they call this car often the Pagoda, right? Because right. of the roof. Yeah. Because of the roof line. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. Huh. That's a pr- uh, oh, look at that. A bit larger version. That was the, lo- yeah, well, that was the, the four door sedan, the, the, uh, the luxury. luxury. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I believe that was the limo version. It's a stretched uh, oh, yeah. roof line and so forth. Sure. Very high dollar, very comfortable car. Mm-hmm. Now, there's the pink Cadillac. Mm-hmm. And apparently it caught fire at some point <gasps> in time. Oh, man. It looks like it really hurt it bad. Mama? Yeah. Mama wasn't in there, was she? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't barbecuing, no, was he? No, Elvis liked his barbecue, but that was not the one, yeah. Wow, no. oh, that's... Uh, and well. there he is standing behind the Cadillac mm-hmm. back in the day when he got it. Now, one thing I found out, we always remember uh, Elvis Presley with black hair, right? Uh-huh, mm-hmm. yeah. He didn't have black hair. Hmm. He had brown hair. Oh. He used to dye his hair black. I did not know that. And his daughter used to do the same thing. Now, here's another German car he owned. It's called the Messerschmitt. The same company that built the airplanes. Yeah, a little tiny thing, and it had a little motorcycle-style two-stroke motor in the back. It set two people in line, and you look at the steering wheel, kind of like an airplane at the time. You suppose he's really working on it? I mean, that's pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah, he you know, he tinkered with them. Oh, okay. And that was a lady that I he I think dated. he tinkered with her, too. He may have <laughs> a bunch of times. And that was another one of his caddies. He loved his Cadillacs, too. Yeah. This was a nice caddy. That's a 57. Uh, no, actually, it's not. It's an it's Eldorado, not? and the fenders look like the 57, but it was actually an earlier car, about a 56. Yeah. Oh, really? so yeah, the 55. Yeah, because the back fenders look like a 57. Right. Huh. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Hey, there. you know, Bob, I, I know you got a bunch of photos, but I'm yep. getting uh, 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 Tom on the phone wants to know if you have a photo of the uh, pickup truck that Elvis used to sneak into <laughs> to get out incognito. No, I don't have that. They didn't. Hmm. Uh, they didn't show that on the on the the list that I was looking at for cars. The only thing I do have that's not in his collection is this one. Wow. And we got a little video. One of the first movies he did. Mm-hmm. He was driving a hot rod. Oh, that. dig this! And th- this car became relatively famous back in the day. And you know, we talked about high boys and low boys. This is a high boy. It's a Model A on Model A frame rails. And if you get a side shot of this thing, I don't know if they, they show one. It sits. You can see the frame rails Tom, below it. You take one of those cases and you please put it in Mr. Tomey's car. Isn't this it is funny? Huh? They, She's picking up on him. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. All the dialogue used to be like this. And, and yes, could you please do that? Everything is a mm-hmm. little classic. Proper. Yes, yeah, proper. Proper. They're acting. Yes. What is that? Is that an Imperial That's, or something? Yeah, Chrysler Imperial. Mm, man, mm-hmm. I had me a car like this, and I would get in it, take off, and I wouldn't stop till I was someplace else. <laughs> yeah, <don't you> <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's the hot rod. There's the hot rod. Got a flat head. You're not going to run over me, yeah. are you? Excuse me, ma'am. I'm in kind of a hurry. I can see that. Dual carbs, electrical fuel pump. Nice to it yourself, Jobs. What's your tag? Three quarter What's your peak at? She does all right. You ought to install a tax. Now, now. That costs money. Yeah, money. Yeah, money. You sure know your way around a car, lady. You have to admire that line of work. I'm a girl. Well, what's wrong with you? How about a little demonstration? Go on, Cat. Show the lady what the car can do. Yeah. You can see it drive here a little bit, Bob. Yeah, they're going to take off for a ride. She's going to try and pick up on it. She's hitting on him, huh? Takes a little while to warm up. Where's her left Doesn't hand? Oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 it takes a while to warm up. The car's only been parked for 20 seconds. I, I, I'm trying to figure out who's got a deeper voice, her or him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if the car needs oil, but his hair definitely doesn't need oh, any no. he, Yeah, Probably just took a walk underneath, you know, that's a flathead Ford. They got you know, all leaked back then. Let's coast so we can talk. Let's coast? <laughs> yeah. Deep. Deep. Deep rivers. Sure, Deacon. I guess. Look at the old hand on I the like steering wheel bit where it's like constantly yeah. back and forth, back and forth. It's like he's trying to get away from it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm scared. Everything you think of doing it for living? Uh, everybody thinks. Give it a try. 
people thinking and doing is two different things. So, Bob, what was yeah. the story on the car? You're, you're saying this one was, isn't in the collection. It is in the collection. It was not his. And if you if you uh, look at you have to research it. I forgot to write down the guy who owned the car, mm -hmm. but it became relatively famous after that, and the uh, the Model A's became real popular. Is it very valuable? I would assume it since would it was be, in a know, movie with him. And I don't know if it's even still mm. around. Wow. Some of them still uh, surface every now and then, mm -hmm. but I've not I didn't track that one down. We've got a lot more uh, shots of some of the cars that he had back then, and you know even a Lincoln. Wow. Oh, a that's Lincoln a nice limo. car. Well, he was yeah, a car I, lover, huh? Yeah, and this one, you know, I had to put that one in there just for Bruce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. That would be a 59 or a 60 where they toned it yeah. down some. They but, toned uh, it down. The grill became part of the headlights, whereas yours, the headlights are in a whole separate bucket. Uh, yeah, and quite a bit less of a, that, that crazy scalloping on the side. Yeah, still, I was going to yeah. say, is that a vinyl top with the little yeah. scalloping? Uh, it, that and, is and a real that. vinyl top, mm -hmm. and it's a limo, so it had a bigger roof. It's a longer extended wheelbase, mm -hmm. and the roof goes back farther with the uh, phony carriage top. Yeah, yeah, the, the yeah. Landau bars. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and what's this? A Rolls Royce. Wow. You, have, you, you know, that's the epitome of, of luxury. He made it when at you that made point. It, you you yeah. got it. And yeah. that's yeah. in front of Graceland. Of course. Oh, oh wow. And yeah. there you go. There's a caddy limo for you, but in white. It looks like the top's been raised or something, like an it's ambulance been top. Yeah, it's been extended. Huh. Uh -huh. It's one of the extended uh, limos, and is, it's been filled in with just a little porthole window. Is that a white vinyl top? Yes. Wh padded white vinyl yeah. top. These cars were beautiful. The the Thunderbird Roadster, it's about a 1963-64 mm, vintage. Yeah, I don't know. That's kind of when Thunderbird kind of, you were starting to go looking at it going, really? Jump oh, the shark. They were huge. Uh, uh, Here's the front end of that Stutz we saw a little oh, while ago. Sure. There he is, I guess, getting the keys to it. That's when that's the Vegas version of Elvis, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's probably oh, yeah. where that car stayed. Yeah. He probably drove that car when he was in Vegas. And Evil Knievel did the same thing. He kept his studs in Vegas. Huh. Makes sense. Oh, and there's another shot of it. Yeah, and then and, although that's not in Vegas, that's in front of Graceland again. Oh. Well, it's probably a good road car. Maybe yeah. he drove it back and forth. He even had a Ferrari. Well, look at that. That's a fairly conservative Ferrari. Well, that's one of the little go. four seaters. Huh. That's a cute little car. Oh, look at that. That, that is the last car he ever owned. Wow, that, that was the Nova-based Cadillac Seville, right? No, actually, it sat on a full perimeter frame. Huh. But it, it was a, a small, the first, what they called the small Cadillac at yeah. the time, because all the other Cadillacs were huge, but that is the last car that he ever bought before he passed away. Wow. Did he drive it or just yeah. buy it? I, who knows? He may have bought it on a whim. But uh, he, he drove just about everything he had back then. And you know, one thing to think about, where were you when Elvis Presley died? A lot of people can remember that and when Kennedy died. Huh. And I remember I was just getting on the freeway coming back from a friend's house. It was 1977. I was getting on the freeway headed back home. I don't remember. Uh, I remember I was in a small town in Colorado. I was in the middle of a three-week road trip. Uh, wow. uh, uh, my friend Dave and I spent three weeks traveling around the United States in a 1964 TR4A. Hmm. What, oh, were doing, what were you doing in that little uh, car, Lucky? Traveling around the U.S. Not much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was back in the 70s, right? Yeah, don't go there, Dynamite. <laughs> okay? you're, you're heading for trouble. That's right. Those records yes. have been permanently expunged <laughs> and yes. sealed. Yes, sealed. yes, of course yes. they have. Uh, yes. There was yes. a Model A. Yeah. I remember where, uh, you were talking about when he passed away. Yeah. Yes. yeah I was working at A&W in Prineville, Oregon, oh. and I remember the cook came out crying. Crying, crying her eyes out. Oh. And I'm like, Nancy, what's wrong? She's like, Elvis just died. And I'm like, oh, my God, did you know him? And, you know, I mean, it's, it, it, I thought it was like her, I, and I was serious, because she, it acted like I thought it was her cousin or something. Yeah. <laughs> what do you know? But well, he's still dead, though. He is yes, still dead, still, and people well, were very then, connected yeah. to him. Yeah. Yeah, there's still theory that he's wandering around the mansion someplace. Yes, yes. Yeah, with I wouldn't want to see what yeah. he looks like at this point. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> now, if you ever get a chance to go to Graceland, it's yes. a great tour. It is. It Fantastic. Is. Uh, really loved it myself. A fantastic place in... Uh, it's a must-see if you and, ever and, get out there. And they do a very good tour when they take you around. You even go and you see the graveside area. Oh. Ah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you don't, they don't open the door, but you see the bathroom where he died. Yes. You're oh. kidding. No, Gross. seriously. Wait, they point up there? to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah which is kind of morbid. That's a little yeah. morbid. But which, by the way, here's a, uh, a song that was out soon after your, he died. This is not The King, but it was called The King Is Gone. It was a, a guy who, who was a Elvis impersonator named Ronnie McDowell. Mm. And uh, 
That's right. Here we go. A simple man. So it was kind of like the story of Elvis, but he was singing as if he was yeah. Elvis. So. Hmm. Anyway. Well, you know what? Let's uh, let's go to the phones. I know we got a commercial break, but before we do, why don't we go ahead and uh, go to the phones? And Diana might. Well, let's go to line one and welcome Chuck Lipka. Chuck, welcome to Speed Scene Live. Hi, kids. How are you, everybody? We're doing great. <laughs> doing How, how's everything on the other side of the country? <laughs> well, hot. It's summer, and uh, tonight we got a little shower of rain. And a little other humid. Than that, everything is fine. Oh, Everything's okay. fine. Now, Chuck, we're going to talk about geezer gassers. Well, we got to ask. So, uh, any chance you're an Elvis fan? Yeah, I grew up during that generation, and I overheard your comment of what, where were you when he when it came out that he died. I was sitting in a graduate level college course and the instructor came in and he had tears running down his wow. face oh, yeah. my god what's happened are you okay and he just lost it he canceled class that night wow. because elvis died yeah wow. you know he really did touch a lot of people he did yeah. he did yeah in various and assorted ways yeah yeah Wrong. i can't say that he was one of my favorites but you know as i've gotten older i've gotten more into his his music and stuff from the 60s and mm -hmm. yeah i would have to say he's probably towards the top of the list now though he he wasn't at the time. Mm -hmm. Well, you're uh, you're uh, representing the geezer gassers, and yes, I guess you're the head geezer. I uh, guess I would be the head <laughs> yeah. geezer. That would yeah. be correct. Oh, I'm not the oldest. Are I am you, the head. Are you the king of the geezers? Uh, no, I wouldn't go so far as to say that either. I'm just the idiot that keeps them in line. Well, well Bob's wearing his yes. shirt for a gathering of geezers, which slightly different, you know, yeah. but it's still you know along the same vein. And yep. uh, Bruce has been showing us some shots of some of your cars lined up in the pits. And uh, you have some great cars, you know, uh, straight front axles, the nose up in the air, and really all kinds of cars. You got the Willis, the Ford, the Chevy, you got everything. Yeah, we've got a, a, a wide variety, and it pretty well encompasses all of what would have been the gas classes of uh, back in the 60s and that's what we were attempting to do now um, typically when somebody says it's a gasser it's a you know it's a straight axle willies or a 37 chevrolet or something like that an anglia or an austin well there were other gas classes besides the top mm -hmm. the top rated classes the a and the b and the c so consequently we kind of modified our stance here a couple of years ago and started including some other things and now we have a wide variety some of the bigger cars the shoebox cars the tri-5 mm -hmm. chevrolets supposed to be a tri-5 ford that's uh going together somewhere down in tennessee that wants to run with us so wow. we'll have a pretty good variety and different the only thing that i have a complaint about now with my guys and it's not a complaint it's just a standing joke is everybody has gone to blue i don't know what it is about <laughs> the color blue but various and assorted shades of blue so that's about the that's that's the the the, the downside to the group at this point is just hmm. we got too many blue cars too many blues i thought yes. red was the hot color i mean come on well, it probably was at one time but the damn red paint has gotten to be so expensive yeah. to paint. and yeah. then it fades Everybody. away yeah. well it's crazy mm -hmm. now chuck you guys are kind of famous because a lot of times the track will book you to come in put on a show to entertain the spectators and uh, you've done that at many events i always run into you at the nhra hot rod reunion but I think you also, uh, weren't you up at, uh, where, Norwalk just recently? Yeah, uh, Norwalk's Blue Suede Cruise, which is a kind of a little <laughs> smaller version of the Hot Rod Reunion, but it's, it's, it's in no way any less of, a, of an event. I mean, it's the, the facility is just top-notch. The Bader family, they couldn't do it any better, I don't think, and the facility is, is just number one in the country as far as we're concerned. Man, and, yeah, you're correct. We... Uh, we do a lot of book in performance things and that's the big the big difference that when we go to somewhere as a book in performance the racing is still top notch on our part but it's not so much blood and guts it's out there and you know run the cars and make a bunch of smoke and noise and you know whoever wins wins that's the way it is now you guys could do a lot of uh uh, racing in the cars and uh, you know you have a, a good time and you try to promote not just the competition but also the sportsman uh, behavior yeah, and the, also 
uh, you know, you, you guys get together, you have a potluck barbecue, you, you everybody. Pork chops, pork, don't forget oh, the pork chops, come the, on. The pork best chops. pork chops yeah. I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the interaction thing is what's, uh, what's really gotten us to a point where we are that, uh, first of all, it's the cars, and then it's the interaction, and, and the people that come to the, through the pit area, and our pits are wide open. I mean, there's no, no secrets. You can come and crawl underneath one if you want, and we put people in the cars. We put kids in the cars. We had a gentleman here not long ago that came and crawled into one of the cars and got tears in his eyes simply because he could remember back in the day when he ran his car. Aww. Now, he was never of notoriety. He was never anybody famous in the magazines, but, you know, it brought back a memory, and that's what we're there to do is to stir a memory and to make people happy and have a good time. And then, of course, our potluck dinner on the halfway through any multi-day event, it's a... Uh, it's world renowned. In fact, there was a point in time that we had to turn people down because they wanted to just join so they could be part of the potluck dinner and not have, <laughs> well, not have a race car. I was thinking about trying that route myself. You know, I was just going to get like a little Hot Wheels car and then <laughs> and then take do a little trick photography and just always try to act like it was broken. <laughs> he was going to bring the, the other thing pot. about that potluck deal is that it's always open to track operators, track management, you know, the people that are out there that are doing the grunt work. If they want to come by after the program shuts down for the night, you know, if you work in the staging lanes or you're one of the tech guys, if you're one of the people in the tower, you come down and you join us. Speed scene live personnel. If they were working their tails off, we wouldn't be where we are. <laughs> well, and, and don't forget about the bar now, too. Yes. Well, yeah, the, there is that, that availability of adult beverage if you are so inclined. <laughs> if you're so inclined. Oh, this is a great shot. I love this. Uh, Shoot blue willies. Yes. Mazzy Racing, uh, best photographers out there. I want to make sure that we give them credit. Uh, MazzyRacing.com. And uh, check their stuff out. They go to all these events. Look at the photography, the lighting, the angle shots. Beautiful. But, uh, yeah, you know, Chuck, there's something about your car and your cars like yours going down the track, side by side, heads up. It really doesn't matter how fast you are or who wins. It's just that, that allure, that essence, that throwback in time of uh, sort of a time capsule. This is where it all started. Well, and, and, and you can see the, the, the point I make, the comparison I draw, is that our cars are identifiable. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, they were identifiable then. Same with the funny cars. And the stuff now, the pro ranks now, even though they are, they are very, very well followed in their, you know, the, what drag racing is about in this day and age, those cars, like NASCAR and a bunch of others, they're not really identifiable. Unless you mean they you all look the same? That's, 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 <laughs> you know, it's, they're rolling billboards. Yeah. yeah. Our cars <laughs> are something that you can identify just by its shape, mm -hmm. by its design, by the, the by the opening of the window and the side door. You know, and, and people can relate to that a lot better than they can the rolling billboards mm -hmm. that have to have a sticker on them to identify what the car is. Right. Yeah, yeah, not only that, your cars are classy looking. Mm -hmm. they, they've got a classic style, a style that people remember. Well, a lot of them are, they have names on them, which yeah. is cool. A lot of people can oh, yeah. relate to yeah. that. You yeah, know, yeah you I like the names. Uh -huh. that, that's and really classic. And it's all classic. a throwback to the 60s. I can't remember going to the drag strip and not seeing a quote-unquote pro racer or a big name racer or somebody who had some notoriety mm -hmm. that didn't have some kind of a name on his car. Right. Yeah. Right. And it, it just, it's part of the part of the shtick that we're we're involved in mm -hmm. you know if i might one other thing i have to i too have to uh, to commend you about or our second year commendation about mazzy racing and their photography but i can't let that go by and not not hump our guy sure you sure know, martin liphart is is second to none and his his work uh, i would put it on a par with anybody else's he does artistic things he does flat out good stuff at the track i mean if anybody's interested go to his website and uh Martin, Which is? he can fix you up with pictures and, and honestly that's a good way to keep him coming to us because they, that's what pays his travel expenses mm -hmm. well you know uh since you're talking about people that help the group tell us a little bit about the insurance company uh yes haggerty haggerty and bryant collie mm. the short version was bryant was looking at the behest of the bosses to expand Haggerty's 
footprint in the in the uh, antique and collector car market. And they had been doing sporty cars, the SCCA guys uh, restored stuff there, some of the roundy round cars for several years, and they had good good response. Well, long story short, I was put in touch with Bryant that they were looking to expand into the nostalgia drag racing scene. And uh, we negotiated back and forth for probably about three, four months, I guess. And we got our heads together, and we are their, I don't know what the, the terminology, we're their, their upfront group to portray how their program for vintage drag racers works. And they will ensure any vintage drag racer. He told me the other day that they're doing some of the big name, big dollar, funny car operations. And then you come down to, you know, the grassroots racer, racer like us that wants to have some kind of protection in place for your program. And, and the short, short version of it is you're not going to be covered when you're in actual competition. When you're on the track, no, there's no, there's no, no coverage for you. Mm-hmm. But you can ensure any and all of your, your vintage race program with Haggerty for the trailer, the, the uh, support equipment, the car itself. You know, while, while it's in transport, while it's in the pit area, well, on the return a lo- road, there's a lot all of good, kinds of coverages. Yeah, a lot of cars get stolen nowadays. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, right. you, yeah. A lot. Mm-hmm. Your car spends a lot of time on the highway going from track to track, mm-hmm. and right. that's where it's most vulnerable. So, uh, yeah, and, and Haggerty's, you know, their their program is, is second to none. It's, uh, it's, it's absolutely... Uh, top notch for the for the vintage racers. They've got a guy that uh, runs a car, and his nickname is Parts Chaser. He's the guy that uh, <laughs> when you you got a claim and you have to have a fender for a '37 Chevrolet, it's his job to find it. Mm-hmm. And they they work. I'm telling you, they work to, to put that that program back together or your program back together. So that you know you have the minimum amount of hassle, aggravation, and downtime. I can't say enough good things about them, and they've they've been great for us over the last couple of years. Any other uh, sponsors or people that you would like to thank? I, I think My maybe lovely wife. For no, I was going to say your the, better half. You better. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> for putting up with all of this craziness for the last, well, I guess it's going on 15, 18 years now. No. And she hasn't killed you yet. <laughs> no, you know, it's surprising. She's a... Uh, She's way into this more, even more intently than I am. And now that she's the bookkeeper, she uh, she really has a handle on it. So I kind of got bit by the bug for vintage go karting, the stuff that started out there on the West Coast in the in the late 50s and 60s. And she's way more into the drag racing than she is the vintage go karting. But that's okay. That's I, okay. I, my background is is drag racing, so. You know, it's just a just a little bit of everything, motorsports. Well, Chuck, I want to thank you for calling in. The geezer gassers, uh, great talking to you, and uh, we look forward to catching up with you at a nostalgia event nearby uh, in the near future. And uh, if there's a track or a promoter out there that's looking to book in a great group, I highly recommend the geezer gassers. Yeah, then contact me directly through the website. Phone number's there. Email is there. Get that, and, and Google is your friend. That, that'll put you right directly in touch with geezer gassers. Google will take you everywhere. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks for calling Thank in. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Good night. Well, well Bruce, uh, I think that uh, should we try to fit that last commercial break in, or should we blow right through? Well, it's up to you, Lucky. What What do you it, think, Bruce? We could, we could do it. Let's then do uh, it. Let's run that last spot, and when we come back, we'll do what's going on, and we'll call her a day. All right. Here we go. Speed Scene Live. We'll be right back. Speed Scene Live, right here with this handsome gentleman that I can't help but staring at. Thanks a lot, John. I bail out of that? That's okay. You did good. You did good. Thank you very much. Take your vehicle's racing performance to an all-new level with a custom racing engine from Paul Williams Specialties. Put PWS's 30-plus years of experience to work on your race car, muscle car, any type of high-performance engine. PWS can build your winning combination from scratch or refresh and improve your current engine. Working on a project? Don't waste money through trial and error. Consult with Paul Williams first. Wrap up your performance with Paul Williams Specialties. Helping championship-level drivers become champions through better performance and reliability. 
For over half a century, Curry rear end components have been twisting out the torque and taking the punishment. And the new Curry lineup is stronger than ever. Some of the world's most capable, hardest working vehicles depend on Curry gears, which is why you can too. Street cars, hot rods and resto rods, drag cars, rock crawling four wheel drive vehicles, whatever you're piloting, Curry expertise and rock solid design means the parts will do their job so you can do yours. Check out Curry's custom rear ends, featuring a full line of upgrades, components, and installation options. The Curry Crate Rear Ends lineup offers ultra strong construction on third members and carrier assemblies. And other underside parts like correct link steering systems keep your four-wheeler pointed where you want it. Add in a wide variety of solid purpose-built suspension and brake components and you've got one tough ready-to-go machine. Grab a hold of a Curry rear end. Talk to the experts at 714-367-2679 or view the complete line online at curryenterprises.com. that has served to defend our great country and our freedom. All of us here in the United States of America would like to offer our sincere appreciation for all that you do and all that you've done. To every family that has made a sacrifice for us, we thank you. Sixty years. That's a long time for a company to do any one thing. Doing it right while sticking to your founding values. Now that takes hard work and dedication. For 60 years, Hetman's All-American Workforce has been devoted to manufacturing the very best headers any team of craftsmen can build. That's 60 years of cutting, 60 years of bending, 60 years of welding, more than two million in all and every set made right here at home. At Hedman Headers, we build all American horsepower, then back it up for life. Hedman Headers, made in the USA. Welcome back to Speed Scene Live, the number one online drag racing TV show. Brought to you by Curry Rear Ends, m &H Tires, Hedman Hustler Headers, Aeromotive Fuel Systems, and TheFault.com. Hey, welcome back. Speed Scene Live. You know, we're going to do what's going on. Uh, one of the things I want to tell you about is an open house this Thursday night at Blacktop Depot in the city of Orange, down mm -hmm. by the Orange Circle. Diana Might. I'm going to be there, Lucky. You're going to hang out. There's going to be am. a bunch of car most, clubs. Most Elvis is bringing his flathead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, nice. that chick won't leave him alone. Yeah. She's a stalker. She is, and I just can't yeah. see her hands right now, so I'm really concerned with poor Elvis. But I want to let everybody know, <laughs> NHRA Hot Rod Reunion, that's going to be at New Hampshire Dragway, August 28th through the 30th. Lucky will be there. That's right. That's right. Bob, what's yeah. going on in September? In September. September, we've got the 4th through the 16th Yellow Bullet Nationals. You're going to be racing there at Cecil County Drags. Man, that's a big deal. September 6th, 18th through the 20th, NMCA West at Fontana. That's right, right here at the Fontana track. Come on out and be yep. part of the NMCA West. And that exact same week, if you happen to be a little bit farther away from Fontana, mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. a little close to Kentucky. Oh, yeah. well, that's going to be the good guys at Beach Bend and Bowling Green, Lucky. That's right. And, Bob, you mentioned yep. uh, Irwindale. Irwindale. you got some events going oh, on. We're busy. Thursday night, street drags, gates open at 4 p.m. Saturday night, street drags, gates open at Ooh. 4 p.m. And Sunday, it's the NHRA Summit Series at Irwindale. And don't forget get those local tracks around here in Southern California. Barona is always a wonderful place to yep. go for, uh, you know what, a great ride uh, down the track. They've got the casino out there. It's a wonderful track, wonderful people. Uh, Fontana's always got events coming on, and there's Famosa Raceway. That's We've right. We've got 
got wonderful tracks here in Southern California. Make sure you go participate. Show your love at the racetracks. That's right. And speaking of showing your love, i got to let you know that Speed Scene Live TV is going to go on a little hiatus for a little while. Uh, I'm going to be on the road. I'm going to be doing some traveling. Uh, we're all involved with projects that need some of our attention. So uh, we're going to take a little break, take some time off. We want to thank everybody that's been part of the show. There's too many people to mention. But, uh, Diana Mai, would you? Uh, no, no. <laughs> continue on, Lucky. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, I want to thank everybody uh, and everybody that watched the show, is a part of the show. Uh, we can't appreciate it enough. So Great. Yep. Well, it's uh, top of the hour, Lucky. We're it's just about ready to sign up. You know yeah. how quickly time goes by. Uh. And you know what? Many thanks to everybody out there. Thanks for watching Speed Scene Live. I'm still looking for it. Has Elvis left the building? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, the encore presentation of tonight's show comes up next. Again, thanks for joining us right here at SpeedScenelive.com. Have a great week, everybody. Speed Scene Live TV, the number one online motorsports TV show. Brought to you by Curry Racing Rear Ends, m &H Tires, Headman Hustler Headers, Aeromotive Fuel Systems, and thefoat.com.